Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. In this video, we're gonna enter wargaming, sci-fi, RPG territory and build this battle mat. But I'm gonna stay strictly within the dollar store challenge type theme. I am really proud of this build because it only used two items, both from Dollarama. This mat is great for all sorts of games. If you're playing a small scale little skirmish game, just one of them will work perfectly. Or if you're playing bigger battles, you can make a couple of them and put them together. My favorite thing is that it folds in half for easier storage and transportation. And it's very durable. This is the kind of terrain that can take a lot of abuse while throwing it in the trunk of your car or getting greasy Cheeto gamer fingers all over it. While I made mine in a futuristic war zone type theme, you could take this build and apply this idea in any style you want. Make it a grassy field, make it a dungeon, make it whatever you need. So these are just cheap foam floor mats from the dollar store. I took two of them and lined them up and planned out a simple street pattern with a few intersections. Drawing this out would give me a guide for laying out and applying my panel pieces. I would use these panels to give the mat some dimension quickly and easily. For this, I used foam craft sheets. I bought a big stack of these for like two bucks and they're fantastic for crafting because they're just thin sheets of EVA foam that you can use for all sorts of things. In this case, I cut the sheets into two pieces with one side larger than the other, a square and a rectangle. To make these simple pieces a little bit more interesting, I sliced off some, but not all of the corners at a 45 degree angle. This little corner cut makes a surprisingly big impact, giving everything a lovely sci-fi vibe. Once I decided on my pattern, I could start attaching my foam sheet pieces. I made sure that I had a full piece to start my pattern, crossing over both floor mats. This is really important. The trick to this build is that the decorative sheets also act as the hinge for the folding mat. And this only works because EVA foam is so durable and can be bent and folded without ripping. To ensure everything could be assembled quickly and hold up to a lot of flexing, I used hot glue to attach the foam sheets. Eventually, I had all my pieces attached and I could cut off all the excess that was hanging over the edges. I've said this many times in videos before, but it's always better to run your tiles and stuff wild, past the substrate and cut off the excess after once you're done attaching everything. Doing it this way is not only faster, but it gives you a more accurate cut. This was the pass or fail portion of the project. Would the foam hinge work? Yeah, it, it worked awesome. I was totally impressed with how well it worked. And because of the foam accent squares cross the seam and cover most of it, you don't even really notice that the mat is two pieces. The downside to EV foam is that it doesn't take texture very well. Because it's so elastic, any texture or pattern you indent it is gonna be really soft. But I did what I could to add a bit of designs to things using some hex cutters, rollers, and a rock. The roller was essentially useless, but the hex pattern looked all right. To prime this, I opted for black latex interior paint. This is the same kind of paint that I used to paint my studio walls. It's a good fit here because a large area needs to be covered and it will remain flexible over time. Latex paint has latex in it, which gives a, a certain amount of elasticity that would be necessary on something that's gonna bend and fold like this mat. The bonus to using it is that it's thick and adhesive enough that it would bond the seams where the edges of the foam squares meet the foam mat, giving the whole thing a lot better odds of surviving abuse long term. And when dry and trying to fold it, I knew that the paint would be all right and not just instantly start cracking. But before I get into the actual paint job of this mat, I want to take a second to talk about this video sponsor, Archvillain Games. If you're wanting to wargame, but you want to do it cheaply, making a budget battle mat probably isn't enough to keep the costs down. Models are expensive. A cheap way to get wargaming models is through Archvillain Games. They have a monthly sci-fi subscription you can join to get a drop of awesome miniatures to 3D print yourself at home. Each month is themed and full of minis perfect for popular wargames. The models all come pre-supported and ready to print. The sets also always include some very large models or vehicles the types of things that are well beyond the means of a lot of people in terms of cost. The best thing though, is that you're just paying for one single monthly fee to own the files. The files that you can then print as many of as you want indefinitely. You wanna print a hundred chonky infantry dudes? Go for it. Once you've bought that file, it's yours to print as many copies as you need. 
Not only is this a cost-effective way for players, it's the kind of thing that could sustain a whole gaming group of friends. And if you're after models that fit the style of most war games, then the sci-fi set from Archvillain is easily the best place for you to start. You can get all the monthly model files, over 40 of them, on their Patreon for only $10. You can't beat that. It's a no-brainer. I'll put a link to where you can join up in the video description below. And do it before this month is up if you want to get this set for that price. I didn't have much of a plan when it came to painting this. I knew that I wanted it to look like a futuristic city. Metallic, dirty, but that's it. So I first hit everything with an overbrushing of a dark reddish brown craft paint using the largest makeup brush I had. I tried not to get complete coverage and to apply the paint in circular motions to avoid brush strokes. This was followed by a lighter, more pumpkin kind of orange. With this, I applied a lot less than the first coat of brown, focusing on the edges. The idea being that it would imply a bit of rust. This actually looked pretty good as is, but I also added a dry brushing of a silver metallic craft paint to really make sure it read as metal. I'll be honest, from here on out, I started to get adventurous and experimental with the paint, doing something outside of my go-to norm. I'm glad I did that in terms of practice and personal development, but I do think that if I had kept things in the brown, rusty, grimdark zone, I would have been left with a final product that was a better fit for most of my wargaming terrain. That being said, you never discover new things and new personal styles if you don't experiment. I cleaned up the road with some very dark gray and got to work trying something weird. I thought it might look cool to highlight all of the lines between the squares to make everything stand out more. At first I went with the ugly orange that I had used earlier. The thought here was that if I got any on the edges of the tiles, it wouldn't stand out too badly since you know that color was already used on them. This looked kind of cool, but I kept playing around. I took the brighter orange and did another pass with that. Starting to think that maybe it would be neat if the lines looked like they were illuminated, glowing, maybe from the power source beneath that drives this gritty future metropolis. Surprisingly, I was having a lot of fun painting out these lines, so I kept pushing it with brighter and brighter colors towards the center of the lines. By the end, I had worked all the way up to a pure white with a very narrow stripe. This is the type of task that I normally find mind-numbingly boring. But for some reason, it was feeling relaxing and satisfying this day, so I just went with it. I'm not sure I like the finished look. It's a bit too obnoxious for me, and it kind of makes the whole thing look like 1970s linoleum. Seriously, it looks a lot like the linoleum my grandparents had in their farmhouse. But again, it's just fun to experiment and try new things, even if the result isn't something you love. I tried to stipple on some lighter gray to the road to make it read more like concrete or pavement or whatever, but this I didn't like. It just looked too much like exactly what it was, dabbed on craft paint. So I went all in on another tedious task that for some reason I was totally in the mood for at the time. I used some narrow masking tape to lay out some indicator lines to dress up the roads. This is actually automotive detailing tape and you can buy it in various widths from auto body stores or even on Amazon. It's a really handy thing to have on hand. The tricky part to masking out lines on something like this is being able to envision what you will end up with. You kind of have to think in reverse. You have to remember that everywhere you apply tape will stay road and what's left becomes painted lines. And you have to make sure that you make clean corners, especially outside corners so that you get nice stripes. I tried to make some different patterns on the different sections of roads and I tried to be somewhat logical about it, kind of inventing traffic rules for this imaginary future city. I used a few different colors to paint them as well to make them seem more like the lines and patterns had a meaningful function. This took a lot of coats, at least three, maybe four, I, I don't really remember. Then came the peeling of the tape, which is simultaneously a nerve wracking and euphoric process. You're nervous that all your paint bled underneath or that it's just gonna look like crap and that you wasted a bunch of your time. But when you're peeling it off and you get those nice lines revealed, it's such a victorious and exciting feeling. This is my favorite part of the whole project. I was happy with how everything came out, even though the tape actually peeled off some of my black primer in spots where it stuck too well. Since the floor mat was also dark gray, this worked as an advantage, giving some variation in texture and color that looked better than the gray stippling I had done earlier, so win.
What I didn't like was how bright it all looked. So I did try to bring things back into the realm of my own personal style by applying a dark brown wash to make everything look more grimy and lived in. The wash helped, but the road lines still look too perfect. They needed some damage. This is pretty easy to achieve by stippling on some of the original dark gray road paint, which would create spots that looked like the paint lines were chipped off. And that's it. That's all. A fun little one day project that results in a very usable and pretty cool looking mat. Like I said, you can use this idea, these floor mats, this folding technique to make any sort of design you want. It has a really nice feel to it. You're not worried about damaging it. It's nice to roll dice on. Overall, it's just a total win. And again, two materials from the dollar store. Doesn't get better than that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did hit the like button, let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you wanna pick up some non-dollar store tools or supplies for your hobby needs, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have an essential equipment page where I list the stuff I use regularly and shopping through those links helps fund the production of these videos. If you really wanna help me make these videos, the best way you can do that is by joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship on Patreon. I'd love to have you as a new member there. That's it. That's all, folks. See you again next time. Cheers. I want it, my pony. My fingertips baloney. What am I doing with my life?